Good morning, welcome back. It is Mailbag Monday as we go through more NASCAR Hero cards. This is becoming a staple of the channel. When we get through this box, I don't know what our Mondays are going to have. <coughs> so without <coughs> excuse me, any further ado, we're going to start back in 1997. Talk about Johnny Benson. He was the reigning Cup Series Rookie of the Year driving for Bahari. Chuck Ryder's team led the most laps in the Brickyard in 1996. Had a pole in 96, en route to Rookie of the Year, a few top 10s. 1997 wasn't as successful in terms of, well, I guess they did get 11th or 12th in points, but I just felt they were more quiet in 97 than what they were in 96. But maybe they were just getting more of that, you know, rookie treatment, running up front more and, and, and just being more seen as a new, new driver. Next one from... Looks like 2022. Ross Chastain with the Moose Fraternity. Of course, this would be the car that he would ride the wall with at Martinsville and go to the championship for. Up next, this has got to be from 1994 or 5, 94. Ricky Craven driving his self-owned DuPont car. So there you see. A little bit of information there. Career highlights. Fan clubs, when people actually used to join those. I'm sure they still exist to some degree. Then a 2011 card of 2010 Nationwide Champ Brad K. Nice looking card there. And he would be the last Cup Series regular to win an Xfinity Series title. As in 2011, NASCAR made drivers declare for a series. You could still run as many races as you wanted, but you would not get any points. Now they've reduced the amount of races to five. Let's see here. Up next, 2022, Eric Almarola. Still don't know if he's returning next year or what his plans are. He's had a rough couple of years. <clears throat> of course, Stuart Haas is just a shell of its former self right now. Not sure what their plans to revamp that team are. Maybe we'll see if Josh Berry can put some new energy in that team. Up next, one from, I believe this is one from 2023. It's one of the speedy cash ones, so it has that matte finish. Zane Smith, of course, just announced he's moving to the Cup Series in a Spire colleague, some kind of effort. I can't remember. It's pretty, pretty detailed, but Zane going to Cup next year. This next one from 2022, a very cool one. Jeffrey Earnhardt drove that RCR3 to a second place finish at Talladega last year with Larry Mack as his crew chief. <clears throat> Another one from 2022. Austin Sendrick with his Daytona 500 win and burnout. A little bit of information about Austin. Up next, one of the famous Andy's Frozen Custard ones of Austin Dillon. It's always a colorful, easy-to-spot car on the track. I think this is either from 2022 or 2023. Our next one's definitely a pre-2019 one. Let's see if I can find out any information. I'm going to say it's 2017, 2018, 2018. So Martin Truex Jr. This would have been the last year of Furniture Row before they sold their charter and Bob Levine, or not Bob Levine, um, Barney Visser shut it down. Bob Levine was the 95 car. Let's see here, 1997, we have Jimmy Spencer. Driving the Smoke and Joe's car. So you see driver Jimmy Spencer, owner Travis Carter, crew chief Donnie Wingo. And that was a, a consistent top 15, top 18 car. Just never found victory lane. They were always just barely there. Barely on the outside. 2003, Chad Chaffin driving for Bobby Hamilton. He had a few wins, a few good runs. Then up next, looks like 19, this is going to be, what, 
99 thereabouts, 2000, 2001, Andy Houston, driving for Addington in the truck series. They would get Caterpillar sponsorship, but it, was Cat it wasn't Caterpillar, it was one of their divisions. But since 96 is the most recent one, it makes me wonder if that's 97. Let's see if we see any of the names. Andy Houston, Tommy Houston, Marty Houston. Ooh, looky there, Alan Gustafson. There's a name on the Addington Racing Team. So going way back. Then we have one that's uh, from 19... Uh, Mid-90s, I don't have an exact year on it. Probably 94 four or five thereabouts, the Black Flag and French's Mustard car. You see it's folded so you could make it like a, kind of like a, a place, not a place map, but like a name place thing. <clears throat> Mike McLaughlin was the driver for CC Wellover Racing. They had one of those rotating sponsorships. Then up next, this is 22 or 23, BJ McLeod with Blaster. I think it's one of those uh, kind of like a WD-40 type product, but some information there about BJ. And this one's going to be from, I'm going to say 1999, based on the paint job, 2000. 2000. Kyle Petty. Hot Wheels Pontiac. Of course, he started the year in this car, but he would not finish the year in this car. After his son Adam passed in that wreck at New Hampshire, Steve Grissom would finish the year in the 44 car, and Adam would drop down to the Bush Series and finish the year in the 45 car. Then Adam or Kyle would bring the 45 with him to the Cup Series in 2001. 2011, Drive to End Hunger with Jeff Gordon. Nice looking card. Got just a couple more to go. We'll call it a day. Get you folks on your way to wherever you're going. So, 19, this is 2001. Steve Portengay. We've seen him on a few racing cards. But there's some information. Looks like it's his own truck series team. You see a big gap there where he didn't run for a few years. But that happens sometimes in racing. Not sure what year this is from. I'm going to say 95 or thereabouts. The original driver of the 64 door loop car for Dennis Shoemaker, Dirk Stevens. And this is just a blank back. Of course, there'd be a few different drivers in this car. And then our final one from 1995. This would be the last year he drove for this team. Morgan Shepard. With the Wood Brothers. Legacy team there. Got some uh, information about the car. Five miles a gallon. There's your schedule for 1995. Look at that run of races on ESPN. And I think it's so funny now. We have briefly went over this. Where people in different groups don't know what channel... The upcoming race is on. I can't find it. It's not on my TV package. Imagine having this as your, you know, look at this. The first one, two, three, the first five races in 1995 are on different networks. And you have a total of five, looks like five or six different networks altogether broadcasting all the races. So if you think it was difficult to find races on TV now, Go back 25 or 30 years, and you actually had a look in a thing called a TV guide. Some of the older folks might know what those are, but you'd have to scan the TV guide. And maybe in your area it wasn't being shown live. Maybe it was being shown tape delayed on Monday or something. You had to look through all the listings and, and find the races. It wasn't always easy. But it's just so funny now that, you know, we got all these different platforms to view the races on, whether it's your local cable company I personally use YouTube TV, which I really like. You know, you got Sling and Hulu and, and whatever else. They're there. You just got to dig a little bit. But anyway, thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Come back at noon for Fast Packs, and we will see you later. Thanks for watching.